Hi there, this is Dean with Pheasant Photonics, and today we're going to be talking about using the Ziegler-Nichols tuning method on the Slice QTC to control a thermal plant with unknown characteristics. As an example, I have this set up with the Pheasant Photonics D2100 DBR laser, but for simplicity, we're only going to be temperature controlling the laser housing. If we go into channel one, which is where I have this set up, you can see that I've set the temperature to 25 degrees Celsius, and that the PID parameters are all currently zero. We're gonna be talking about those in a second, but first we gotta make sure of some things. So the first thing you wanna be careful of is the transducer type. The QTC can be set up with a TEC, which is bipolar, or with a monopolar heater. And you have to be careful to make sure that you have the right one in here. The other thing is, if you find that your QTC is giving you the opposite response that you expect, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that your polarity is correct. This can either be positive or negative, and that's especially important with heaters. Uh, the last thing you want to do is just make sure your thermistor values are correct for whatever thermistor you have in here. These are the values that come set with the QTC and they're pretty standard, but this can also throw you off. The next thing we're going to talk about is the temp limits. Uh, our locked range for this is going to be 0.5 millikelvin, and you can just set your minimum and maximum temperature. We won't have to interact with those today, but that's a good thing to know about. So now that we've got all that settled, we can talk about the PID parameters. The way you're going to want to start this off is by changing the proportional gain. And to do that, you're going to want to turn proportional on and also turn your servo on. Going back into this menu, we're going to start increasing the proportional gain by small amounts until we start seeing overdriven oscillations, and that won't be for a while. It's important at this point to go slowly while you're tuning the proportional gain. I usually go in steps of about 10%, so that was the one. But here we can go up, you know, two and then we'll go another two. And what we're looking for is that the current here is going to be proportional to the error by this factor, roughly. And if this starts to dip down, you know, we can come back in here and we can kick it up a bit. I happen to know the settings for this exact setup, so we're gonna go a little faster than I'd normally recommend, but increments in about 10% is important. It's also important to know that the proportional gain tuning is sort of a macroscopic process. You don't really need to get it to the exact ideal setting, you just need to get it pretty close. So with that in mind, we're gonna start going up, and I like to bump it up and then just wait a second. You know these small steps, you can see the error start to climb here at the bottom. And what we're aiming for is this dotted yellow line. You can see the error is going to be highlighted in yellow while it's outside of those bounds. And once we get inside, you'll see that it turns green. I'm gonna go a little fast here also. Another thing to note here is that when you're tuning this way, you aren't usually going to be able to get the error all the way to zero just with the proportional gain. For that, you're gonna need the integral and derivative gains as well. Gonna, we're going to speed this up a bit. So as you can see, I'm just increasing it and then waiting a minute for it to settle out. And then once this number drops too low, I'll increase it again, try and get it back up. And we're really just trying to force this as close to that zero as possible. And again, I'd recommend going a little slower than this. And what we'll start to see soon is that this error signal will begin to oscillate. And at first it'll be a damped oscillation. It'll, you know, kind of get kicked up and then settle out back to a flat line. And what we're really looking for is that overdriven, you know, unbounded oscillation where the, the peaks get bigger as it goes on in time. If you're not seeing peaks, it might be because either your zoom on the y-axis is wrong. We can change that by turning this right knob or perhaps your time setting is incorrect, or a little too fast at least. 
I like to have it at about 10 millikelvin and five seconds per division. Back in here, we should start seeing some of those oscillations soon. I'm gonna kick it up to eight, and you can see right here, we have a little bump. That's good. And that's that damped oscillation that we were talking about earlier. Gonna kick it up to nine. It doesn't truly matter how much you kick it up at this stage. Um, you can go in smaller amounts. Uh, and that's because we're really looking for that overdriven oscillation. So even if it starts off a little slow, it'll kick it up and start to overdrive it, and you'll see it eventually. Here it looks like we have just normal driven oscillation. This is good. It means we're getting really close. Gonna kick it up one or two more. And finally to here. One thing that I will note that can happen is if you bump the proportional gain up while it's on a downswing, it'll look like a flat line. Just be patient, wait for those oscillations to come out, and here you can even see that we're starting to get that overdriven that we're looking for. The peaks are getting higher as they go along, and that's, that's where we want it to be. All right, cool, so I'm gonna say that 11 is our proportional gain, and now that we have this, there are two important things you need to do. You're gonna to wanna to pause the QTC, and you're gonna to wanna to be sure to turn the servo off. If you don't do that, it'll keep overdriving it, and it'll drive your plant uh, way too hard, the temperature will start swinging and that'll be bad. So now that we've paused it, you'll notice that these two little lines come up. And we can control their position by turning the knobs. The right knob controls the red line, the left knob controls the blue line. And what we want to do is find the distance between two of these peaks. You can see the number here. That's going to be our tau. And again, this isn't something you have to be super careful with. This process is pretty robust. I'm going to say that 3.65 seconds looks to be about right. You just want the peak to peak distance. You know, if you're over here, it's not going to change your numbers too much. It's going to be fine. All right, so now that we have this tau value, what we're going to want to do is go back into our settings. And our proportional gain for the final setting is going to be 0 0.6 times whatever we ended up with. We have 11. 0 0.6 times 11 is 6.6. So I can just enter that number in real quick by holding on that and entering 6.6 .6 on the pad and pressing enter. The integral time is going to be half of whatever this tau value is. We have 3.65 seconds, so half of that is going to be 1.825 seconds. You can again just enter that by holding on the box. 1.825, enter. And then this derivative time is going to be this number divided by 8, or the integral time divided by 4. And for us, that's going to be 0 0.456 seconds. You can enter more decimals on these. Oh, that's wrong. If you enter the wrong number, obviously you can hit this delete button. Or if you enter just a really wrong number, you can hit this little window, and that'll clear it. So 0 0.456, and we hit enter. And now that we have these all tuned, right? We can go ahead and turn them all on and exit out of this. And we see that our error here is pretty high. And I'm gonna unpause it too. Let's do that. We can hit play. Cool. So we can see our error is pretty high and we'll know that this works if when we turn this on, we see this very quickly come up to zero and then quickly stabilize. Obviously the bigger your plant is, the longer the stabilization will take but after two or three oscillations, it should really be within your set point, as long as you're not too greedy. And you can see that ours just kind of overshot, it's gonna settle down in, and this box is gonna turn green. Any second. And there you go. So, with that, we have performed Ziegler Nichols tuning on the Slice QTC. You can repeat this for any plant you like. And if you have any further questions, feel free to contact us at infofessent.com or by going on our website, which is linked in the description.